which of the following series converge? Okay, so it looks like we got 1 over square root of n. And these all seem to go from 1 to infinity. Uh, cosine of 1 over n and some sort of geometric power series. Maybe. Okay. So the first one. So we look at the first one. And we're just going to... So I don't do a very formal analysis of this because you really don't have time when you're doing the AP test. You're looking at maybe two, possibly three, if it's a calculator problem, uh, minutes to work through this. So my formal proofs are kind of mm, hit or miss. But my goal is to get the right answer in a timely manner. So when you see something like this, your first thought should be um, the harmonic series. So as a reference point, you probably know, you go n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And this will diverge. This is kind of like the... Uh, the halfway point, the separation between where things converge and where things diverge. So if you have, um, let's say 1 over n to anything greater than 1, so like let's say 1.1, 1 .1, n equals 1 to infinity, then this would converge. But if you have anything 1.1 1 .1 or less, n equals 1, 1 over n, the first or 0 0.9 it would diverge so if we have something that's oh, 1 over n to the 0.5 which is what 1 over the square root of n is this will also diverge I think it's ERG diverge yep so you look at this and you're like all right so that is going to be more divergent than um, 1 over n, and we know that 1 over n diverges, therefore that must diverge as well. I guess that would officially be called a comparison test. So we would know that 1 over the square root of n is um, bigger, larger, than 1 over n, so, therefore, since we know 1 over n diverges, 1 over square root of n has to diverge as well. Um, a more formal, slightly longer uh, method to see why this is true is the integral test. And the integral test works with uh, 1 over n as well, the harmonic series. But for this, we'd say, all right, 1 over n is the same as n to the negative 1 half dn from 1 to infinity. I know I could have used x, but that's okay. It's good to have a change of variables from time. And so when you take the integral of this, get, uh, you add 1, so it'll be 1 half, and then divide by the reciprocal, or no, multiply by the reciprocal, divide by the power, we're going to multiply by 2. And this will go from infinity to 1. Ah, it feels like there should be a negative in there somewhere. Nah, probably not. Okay. So 2 times um, infinity square rooted minus 1 to the 1 half. There we go. And you can kind of see that, all right, you really shouldn't take infinity to a power. We did. Goes to infinity and it diverges. So that's the way you can kind of see that it works. And the counterexample then, or not counterexample, the example on the other side of uh, 1 over n would then could be like 1 over n squared dn. That's a 2. That's a 2. Which is integral 1 to infinity of n to the negative 2 dn. Go down here. n to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, same as multiplying by negative 1. 1 to infinity equals, and I'll rewrite this slightly, and I'll say this is same as 1 over n from 1 to infinity, or, yep, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 over infinity, which goes to 0, which equals 1. So, this shows you that 1 over n squared converges, 
1 over square root of n diverges. So the best way to look at that one is you just compare it to uh, the harmonic series, 1 over n. So strike that through with red. Hope does not work. All right, go back to blue. So, all right, so now we have our second one. So we have n equals 1 to infinity cosine of 1 over n. Hmm. So the best way to think of this one, if you had sine, that would be more difficult to deal with. But with cosine, we can just think of this logically. So we start at cosine. So this will equal cosine of 1 plus cosine of 1 half plus cosine of 1 third. And it goes on until dot, dot, dot cosine of 1 over infinity, which is 0. So what's happening here then, look at cosine of 1, and that's, let's draw a little circle. Whoop, that's a terrible circle. Um, cosine of 1. So right up here is pi over 2, which is like, I don't know, 3.1415 divided by 2, which is like, I don't know, 1.5? I'll call it 1.5. 1.5 and so 1 is like maybe right there and so that is like I don't know something maybe a half either way I'll call that like a quarter as n gets bigger it's going to keep moving the angle this way until eventually you get 1 over infinity which will be 1 so what we have here is maybe like quarter, a fifth, and seventh. No, that's wrong. Quarter, maybe a third, maybe a half, working it all its way up to one. And eventually it gets to a certain point where it's going to be almost um, one, cosine of zero, which is one. And then your basis is going to be adding one for the rest of eternity. So... Long story short, this doesn't even go to zero. And if it doesn't go to zero, at least with this previous one, it goes towards zero. Cosine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity doesn't even go to zero. So there's no way that's possibly going to converge. So that's going to diverge. Long story short, if the term doesn't go to zero, it's not going to, it's not going to converge at all. It's going to keep adding some number that's not zero forever. Hope, hope. All right, third one. So since we know it has to be one of them, it's probably going to be this one. Hope. Purple. So let's see what we got here. So what I'm going to start by doing is factoring out an n and look at the behavior as it goes to infinity. So cancel the n's and this is going to behave similarly to 1 over 2 plus 3 over n to the n which will be kind of sort of like 1 half to the end. So, but it'll be slightly smaller than, so let's see here. We have like an extra term down here, but as n gets really big, that term is going to disappear and be negligible. But for a little while, it's going to have a little bit of an impact, and then I'll make the denominator bigger. So what we can also say is this will be less than that. And so if we can show that this converges, then we know that something smaller than something that converges will also have to converge. So this right here is just a geometric series. And this one is common enough that you're probably like, oh, it's probably 2. It's 2. But we know our formula for a geometric series, n equals 0 to infinity of, what is it, r to the k equals 1 minus r to the k plus 1 all over 
That's supposed to be K. Um, is that K? It's N. There we go. Uh, 1 minus R. So the idea is it goes from 0 to K. And in this case, we have infinity for K. So this is going to go to 0. This will be 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 1 half, which will be 1 over 1 half, which equals 2. Now, this starts at 1, but what I use with the geometric series formula down here is 0. So they're not quite the same. We have an extra term in this one, specifically the 0th term, that we don't have in the other one. So to actually get a better answer, we would do is we'd have to take out the, um, the first term. And the first term is when n equals 0. So we'd have for when, when n equals 0, we have 1 half to the 0, which equals 1. So instead of having 2 here, this will equal 2 minus 1, which will just be 1. So, long story short, 1 is a number, and therefore, number 3 will converge. So, big idea here. There's a bunch of rules for convergence tests. Um, I would recommend understanding all of the rules. Nah, not all of them, because there's, there's a crazy many of them. Um, and even things like the ratio test, you really don't need to know. Um, it's useful for proving things, but very little bit, very few things on the AP test will be proving. It'll be, give me the right answer. And you're like, oh, well, here you go. Right answer. And the idea is you don't need to actually prove things. So having a intuitive feel of, um, a lot of the, uh, compare the, the tests for, um, convergence and divergence are good. And knowing a handful of examples, like the harmonic series, is good to know if those converge or diverge. So for this one, you basically, the other one, other one is a comparison test. So the idea here with number one, you look at the harmonics. This is more divergent than the harmonic series, which diverges. So number one also diverges. Number two doesn't go to zero, so it's going to diverge. Then number three like, all right, this is kind of like a geometric series, and the ratio, the thing in the middle right there, is pretty much kind of sort of less than one, so pretty much kind of sort of converges. And that is the idea of how you look at at least these particular series, and you can tell which ones converge, which ones diverge. And hope, just bam, there we go.